Hello, everybody, and thank you for joining me, your host, Tommy Gilbert, as we sit down and take a behind-the-scenes look into Titan Athletics with weekly interviews with coaches and athletes. This is Titan Tables Off. Titan fans, welcome inside the Ames Library Podcast Studio for week four of Titan Table Talk here in the fall of 2024. We have three interviews scheduled for you today. We'll talk women's tennis here with head coach Jason Van Hooklin, men's soccer with Kyle Shawls, and we'll wrap things up with Norm Esch and a couple of football players as the Titans come off a victory up at Elmhurst on Saturday. But first and foremost, Jason Van Hooklin, the former, former head men's tennis coach here from 20, uh, 2006 to 14, came back, took over as the head women's coach a couple of years ago in uh, summer of 2022, and now for the first time this year, full-time as director of tennis and head women's coach. Welcome. Thanks for joining us. And uh, tell us a little bit about how this, this new role has gone for you so far this fall. Well, thanks for having me. I, it's been great. I'm, I, um, I just finished up my career at Illinois State University and, and real excited about being over here um, and that uh, Mike, had the, uh, Mike made the tennis position a full-time position so that it can really get the attention that it needs. Um, I'm you know, able to now spend more individual time with the girls, spend more time on recruiting, you know, just spend more time on logistics. Uh, we're planning our own spring break trip this year to, um, to uh, Gulf Shores, Alabama, uh, where traditionally we've gone to Orlando and, you know, was able to organize a few teams to go down to that, uh, come with us and play. So it's just really good to be here and be able to put the time into the job that it needs. Yeah, absolutely. And that's something, you know, as we've seen this, this program start to, you know, turn a corner, really be on the rise here over the last couple of years, both for the men and the women. Um, something will be really exciting, I think, going forward for sure. Uh, will you have any sort of recruiting with the men at all, or is that really that is that going to be Sam's responsibility still, and you're going to handle mostly the women's recruiting? Uh, we're going to do it together. Okay. Uh, I'll really be able to help him now more with some logistics for the men's team. Uh, you know, where he may not have time to do and, and spend time reaching out with those those emails and those cold calls to uh, to potential athletes, um, trying to get them to come to campus where they can meet with him and he can talk about the program or meet with me and they can talk about the program and what they're looking for in their college experience. So, yeah, definitely helping Sam out with some of his uh, his recruiting and his logistics as well. Nice. Yeah. And I know we got to chat a little bit last year with Kate and with Amber about some of the improvements that they've mm -hmm. seen uh, moving over to Evergreen as really the full-time home for the program at this point. Um, but Evergreen Racquet Club was continuing to make some changes, renovations, uh, and everything this spring, even going into the summer How's that facility looking over there as we started the fall season? Evergreen's been fantastic. It's a, it's a great partnership, and, and they've been all in with us. Um, there are now seven hard courts out there where there were originally four. Uh, three brand new ones were put in new last year, and the other four were a little bit high, behind on the surface, and Evergreen decided to go ahead and resurface those four other courts so that they're all even, and, and they look fantastic. We got a nice donation to uh, help build kind of like a little clubhouse out there, um, which is going to be nice for the players. Uh, it's going to have some air conditioning, a refrigerator in it, and um, you know, some uh, a couple of lockers and things like that. A little little place for them to hang out in between matches. So yeah, it's looking really great out there. And obviously, the access that we have to the indoor facilities. Um, you know, when we're not in our main seasons, the kids can go out there and and, and play uh, on their own. They can call them up and see if they've got any courts available, and they can get out there and get extra hitting in. It's just been a great great uh, agreement with them. Yeah, and especially as a, you know, as a, a sport that can be played indoors, but it's better outdoors um, and in a northern climate. It's really nice to have that option inside. It's, it's much easier to go over to Evergreen in the middle of December than it is to try to get a couple of courts reserved and set up at Shirk at yes, the same absolutely. time. Yes, absolutely, yeah. And the, and the surface at Shirk can be a little fast, yeah. so it's definitely um, it's better practice for them to be out on a, on a regular court. Yes, absolutely. So as you think back on last season, obviously a good chunk of your lineup returning this year mm -hmm. should be really exciting. Um, but already, I mean, seven dual wins, defeated Elmhurst in the CCW play-in before falling to then 25th ranked North Central in the quarterfinal. Um, a young, overall, and talented team last year. A couple of freshmen coming in who I know you're pretty excited about, uh, one of whom we haven't gotten to see play yet, of course. But uh, what are your thoughts on building off of the, the momentum that you guys kind of started to build at the end of last season? I'm, I'm so proud of what we've put together. Um, you know, we, we started out um, 
uh, my first year here, I came in after the recruiting season was already done and had a great group of girls who came out for the team and gave it their all. Um, each year now we've added um, two to three players that have all helped us out within the top six and uh, you know are helping our varsity squad. Um, we added three freshmen this year and all three freshmen, well, we've had the one injury, but uh, she'll be helping out in the top six as well. Uh, so yeah, we added Katie and we added Angela and we added um, – uh, Gabby, Gabby. yeah, mm-hmm. added Gabby, and uh, Gabby's done a fantastic job moving up and moving in right in as a freshman, playing at the two single spot. Uh, Katie will probably be battling for you know that two, three, four spot as well. And um, you know Olivia and Kate have raised their games. Uh, they're playing great doubles. All the girls are playing great doubles, and Angela has stepped in and, and played some six singles, and she's played some three doubles, and so yeah, it's it's been great. Yeah, and the early season wins over Lawrence, Illinois College, and then Millican, um, and then competitive losses against Augustana and North Park were mm-hmm. teams that we, you know, going back a couple of years have not necessarily always you know, a lot of six oh six ones in there sometimes, and you're you're looking at a team that I think really has a lot of potential. I mean, Amber's four and one at number one singles to start things off. Gabby and Olivia each have a pair of wins at two and three singles. Kate Christian's three and two playing number four. Mm-hmm. The girls are very resilient. They're, uh, they're mentally tough, and it's, it's good to see out there. Um, they've all worked hard on their physical conditioning, and I think that is paying off for them in some of these uh, long matches and the fact that they have played some tight matches and been able to come through. It just gives them the confidence to know that they're, they're not down, uh, or even if they are down, that they can still come back and, and keep fighting and, and win. And, um, yeah, Amber's been fantastic this year she's really worked hard on her game all the girls have as far as in improving the the spots that are not so great and you know making sure that they're utilizing their weapons when they have the opportunity so yeah it's it's been a really good year so far one of the things that I, I would say I'm about I could give you about a 60 percent explanation but for those who really have not a clue whatsoever um, in terms of setting your lineup in tennis, like this mm-hmm. is, you're not talking a, you know, football or baseball or type strategy where you can kind of do whatever you want and try to match up somebody with somebody. There's essentially limited flexibility you have during the season. You can't have Amber play number five singles or something just to get a free win. But can you give, give us a little insight in how that works? Like, I, I believe you have to submit like a, is it kind you of do. Some you you have to submit a ro- you submit a roster every match, and nobody's supposed to move up or down two positions okay. without uh, you know some kind of reasoning behind it. As far as showing that uh, you know you can move one position, and, and in order to do so, you know there has to be reasoning behind that. You know that they've they've been more successful in their matches, or you know you you do have some challenge matches kind of to start the season and analyze your talent, and then just you know try and put them where you think they'll match up. And and all the girls uh, too, they all develop um, what's called a UTR universal tennis rating and those are out there for all coaches to see to kind of give an idea of the level of the girls that they've beaten and, and played and, and it's pretty accurate even even between men and women um, it's the UTRs are pretty accurate so hypothetically if somebody were to really like if they were to put their number one at number four number five what would happen in that scenario the, the lineup would be challenged okay yeah the lineup would be challenged yeah, you can't do that. You can't drop your number one to four. And if you have somebody injured or something like that, your two players injured, you can't put your number seven player up at two to keep the other right. other people in their normal spots. You have to move everybody up a spot. Okay. That was more just my curiosity yes. than anything else. <laughs> sure, <but. laughs> yeah. Uh, you do have some flexibility in doubles, though. You really can do whatever you want with your doubles teams. And, and you know, you can put your one player down at, uh, at three doubles and, and try and get a win there. And, you know, you can m- make any mix and match that you want with your doubles lineup. Interesting. Yeah. Hmm. Um, so as we take a quick look at this week, uh, this is going to air on Tuesday, but you're playing tonight, which is Monday night, mm-hmm. uh, up at Elmhurst at 4.15 there. So if you can go back in time and make it up to Elmhurst and watch, great. Good for you. Uh, and then Thursday to Sunday, the ITA Regional this weekend. Um, give us a little little sense of what to expect this weekend in particular at the Regional. Sure. Uh, yeah, we're excited to go to Elmhurst tonight. Uh, this will be Katie's uh, first match back, so we'll get to see her place her first um, a real match in her college career tonight. So looking forward to that. Um, going to the ITAs, uh, Amber and Olivia will be attending that. The ITA Regionals are for all the top players in the region where they compete. The winner of the regional would then go on to small college nationals where they would play um, 
the uh, all the other winners from the regionals in Division Three, and then at Small College Nationals, you also have Division Two. You have NAIA and you have JUCO, and they have another tournament for all the winners of those. And then whoever wins that gets into the Division One um, national tournament, basically. Uh, we were we were pretty. Um, there were a few years back um, when I had Brian uh, Piotrowski sure. and, and Brian yep. Sorch that actually went to the regional and won the doubles. Went to small college nationals. They finished uh, fourth in the nation uh, that year, losing their semifinal match in a third set super breaker and losing uh, the third fourth place match in a third set super breaker. So they were right on the cusp of of, of winning the doubles for Division three. So that was a pretty neat experience. A lot of good players there. So you get to come in and and it's about getting hot at the right time and and uh, you know I think Amber's got a chance to compete with some of these players and I'm excited to see what she can do yeah Brian Piotrowski actually lived about probably eight doors down the hall from me in Dolan Hall is that right year. okay <laughs> played IM softball with us for, for uh -huh. several years as well back when that was more of a thing in May term and let me tell you the the tennis swing translates to the lefty power bat in softball. One, I can believe it. 100%. Yep. <laughs> yep. And he used to unload on the bracket, so I'm sure he unloaded with the bat, too. He did. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> uh, if you want to catch the Titans at home out at Evergreen Racket Club this fall, you've got two more chances next Monday, the 30th, against Concordia Chicago, and then Tuesday, the 8th, against Monmouth. Once again, those will both be out at Evergreen, hopefully outside in beautiful Bloomington fall weather. Um, but good luck to you guys up at Elmhurst uh, this evening or yesterday if you're watching this on Tuesday and at ITAs this weekend, of course, Amber and Olivia. And thanks so much for joining us, Jason. I appreciate it. Thanks for having me. We'll be right back with Kyle Shawls. Get with the right side, the cutter to Hart for the throwdown. A senior day to remember for Grant Hardy with an impressive flush. The 2 2 pitch, called strike three! A breaking ball down the middle freezes the batter pens, and Jake Pullum sprints off the mound. This one swung on into the outfield. That was That's going. going far, and it is gone! Bailey Turner walks it off for the Titans. Five seconds. Sawyer White, the heave, the bank is open! And welcome back. Our second guest, as promised, is head men's soccer coach Kyle Shawls. Kyle, for the first time this fall, welcome in. How are we doing today? I'm doing pretty well today. Excellent, excellent. I want to talk to you a little bit about the start of the season so far. Titans off to a 5-0-1 start. The only time you guys have hit the road was for that season opener up at Kalamazoo on August 30th. 1-1 uh, draw, I believe that was, uh, it was a very, very early goal and a very, very late goal. Yeah. Was it not, if I remember that yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. So, um, I mean, that trip was a fantastic way to, to start the season. It was sort of a culmination of all the preseason time that we had together in terms of the team building um, and bringing the guys together. We had to, got to have some really cool experiences. Uh, the guys are still talking about the laser tag that we played while we were up there. Uh, but with my connections to the WMU staff as well, we were able to train at their indoor facility the night before the game um, in terms of our preparation. And uh, I always know the food spots uh, as well. Yes. So we were able to take care of the guys in that regard. So it was a good trip um, and, and had a lot of fun with everybody while we were there. And, and then, uh, you know, played a really good team on the road. Uh, and opening game, you never really know what you're going to get out of yourselves and your opponents because there's no film or scouting or anything like that at that point um, so it we got off to a slow start um, and in conceding a, a set piece goal you know in the first four minutes and then after that you know we started to turn things around and had a really good match and and felt like we could have come away with a win but given that we were behind a goal we were happy to take a draw home so yeah, and that's now going back, I mean, what, three-plus weeks? Yeah. And, uh, the only reason I even want to ask you is because that, that is the only trip you guys have had so far this year. Yeah. You've uh, bucked the trend of every other Titan sport, playing 75% of their September games on the road, and you guys have been at home since then, and five straight shutout wins have not allowed a goal at Nice Field all season. 
uh, Eureka, Blackburn, Rockford, and then Monmouth and Knox this past week. Yeah. Um, so aside from, you know, we'll, we'll talk whole team in a second, but what have you seen out of the, the defense and Sam Kedzie in particular that's uh, five straight clean sheets from a former goalkeeper? <laughs> yeah, so obviously happy with the way Sam's come in and been playing, but also just the entire defense. We returned pretty much everybody that played in our back line and, and defensive midfield positions from last year. Um, and generally, you know, the defense is a little bit quicker to be ready at the beginning of the season um, as, in, as opposed to ironing out the details offensively. Uh, so I feel like we knew we could be ready to defend well at a high level uh, at the beginning of the season. And, you know, all the guys, the, the entire team came in extremely fit in the best shape of their lives. Um, and so we've really just been out, able to outpace teams. Um, and even though our, our back line and Sam get a lot of credit for it, everybody on our field defends, um, you know, and, and guys that come off the bench do a great job for us also uh, to continue to put teams under pressure. And we feel really good about our depth and really control and tempo of the game. So I think that has a lot to do with preventing opponents from getting opportunities. And then when they have, Sam has just been reading the game really well. Um, and even, you know, shots that should be challenging, he's making look pretty easy right now. So I think he's come in with a lot of confidence and a lot of poise, uh, which just helps calm everybody else down in front of him. Yeah, it was down at, at kind of the last 15 minutes or so of the second half against Rockford about a week mm -hmm. ago, and I was sitting kind of next to the press box where you can only see half the field. And I didn't have to move for 10 minutes because yep. the game never moved from that half of the field. Yeah. And when you can play that kind of – and I know you guys don't necessarily always focus on possession-based soccer as opposed to trying to get more explosive chances and trusting your back line. But when you have that going for you, it's really a win-win a in both scenarios because you're giving those backline guys a little bit of a, a, a break, too. Yeah, you know, if our backline guys organize well and our frontline guys put in the and our midfield guys put in the work defensively, um, you know, it, it makes it easier physically on our defenders. But uh, but yeah, we like to defend high up the pitch, and it makes it easier to go score if you win the ball closer to goal. Uh, and so that's sort of our philosophy. You know, we press high up the field, and then we like to go forward fast when we get it. Yeah. Um, so focusing a little bit on the games that were actually played in the last five mm -hmm. days that will be fresher in your mind here. Yeah. Um, Wednesday, home 3-0 uh, victory against Monmouth. Uh, outshot the Scots 27-6. to Three saves for Sam in the net. Um, Logan Tierney put a PK in the back of the net in the 40th minute. And then Matthew Perchick, you know, 77th and 84th minute goals, both assisted by Devin Kennedy. Um, so they like a little bit of the microcosm of the season on offense, a little bit where it takes a little longer to develop, and then mm -hmm. you've got some good chances later on. Uh, what did you see in that game overall? Yeah, I think, you know, whenever we play a midweek match, we call it a work Wednesday game. You know, both teams have been in class all day. Um, the minds might not be as sharp as they are on a Saturday. And so our goal every Wednesday, every day that we play is to be the hardest working team on the pitch. And I think that, you know, Monmouth definitely gave us a strong test uh, from from the beginning of the match. And, and we were able to just sort of wear them down with our fitness and our depth. And um, you know, seeing a lot of different guys score for us at this point of the season has been really nice. Uh, you know, I, I know Logan Tierney's gotten on the board for us a number of times. Uh, Fahim Mujahid, Mujahid um, and Ryder Coleman have all done their part, and it seems like Devin Kennedy's found a way to assist on almost every single one. <laughs> so, uh, so, yeah, the guys, um, you know, I like that scoring's coming from a lot of different places right now. We need it to be that way. Um, you know, I still think we can work to be a little bit more creative in our final third and then just do a little bit better job with our, our details and finishing on goal. Yeah, and you talk about Ryder Coleman, that first collegiate goal on Saturday really mm -hmm. couldn't have come at a better time. Yeah. Uh, I've got a, a scoreless tie with Knox going to the last 10 minutes or so of the match and then the 80th minute goal for Ryder. Um, First goal of his college career. I think he had an assist last well, year. If it he had a bra he had a brace earlier in the season for us. He had a couple of goals. Did he? Yeah, yeah, that. no. Okay. So he's um, he's at, off to a great start um, to to his sophomore campaign, and he's a guy that we knew could always score goals when we recruited him. Uh, and then, you know, we've got him now figured out exactly what he's doing on the defensive side of the ball, and it's turned into more scoring opportunities for him too. But the uh, yeah, I think I think it came, you know. The second half, we did a really good job of, of pinning Knox in their own half. Um, you know, re like, as we talked about, really strong defensively up front with our attacking players and our midfield players. 
turned into a lot of good scoring opportunities. And then I think it was actually from a long throw that Fahim set to Ryder, um, and Ryder blasted at home. It was a, it was a great goal. So, and yeah. sorry, Ryder, I'll go back and watch your first two goals of the season <laughs> as penance. Um, <laughs> if you want to want to kind of quickly look ahead now, as we finally have to hit the road. Yeah. This week, uh, Wednesday, which would be tomorrow for those of you watching this on Tuesday, four o'clock start up at Lake Forest. So mm-hmm. for the the suburban alums, northern suburbs, great place to go catch the Titans in action without having to drive through traffic to Bloomington. And then Saturday, heading out to Wabash for a three thirty Eastern time start. Yeah. Um, probably two of your tougher non conference tests both on the road as we prep for this last week of non-conference play yeah this you know the previous week and the coming week for us are are really setting us up to be prepared to play our conference which is a Wednesday game and a Saturday game pretty much all the way through the month of October Uh, and so we've got two weeks here where we have that same stretch against you know a series of four tough opponents so we've we've come out um, of our home matches really strong uh, with, with good performances and good results, and we're just looking to go on the road and, and put together good performances. It'll be good, you know, refresher for us to get back on the bus. Um, I think we have enough returners that we're, we're pretty uh, uh, road-tested at this point, especially with the run through the conference tournament last year. We'll do we, a lot for you, yep. Yeah, we know where we're stopping to eat um, on the way and, and uh, bathroom breaks and all that sort of stuff. So we're, uh, we know what we're doing, and, and hopefully it'll be just like old hat. Yeah, and then CCW play gets underway. As you guys mentioned, you have a bye at the beginning, Mm -hmm. um, and then wait till the 5th, which is the Saturday of homecoming weekend, of course, for a 1 p.m. start against Carthage. Obviously, uh, what's always a very exciting atmosphere, but then we are also kicking off league play and bringing in certainly a favorite in the CCW in Carthage as well. Yeah, I mean, Carthage is really strong. They return a lot of guys from their team that, that played in last year's conference championship game with us. Um, you know, I think I think they're every bit as good, if not better, than they were last year. Um, will be a really strong opponent to, to test us right from the get-go. And, you know, for our guys, I think it's nice to be playing at home for homecoming. Usually we're celebrating homecoming on the road at someone else's field. Uh, but it'll, it'll be nice to, to have the home crowd behind us uh, for that one as well. Well, good luck with everything, Kyle. Thanks so much for joining us today. And we'll be back with football in just a few minutes. Thanks, Tommy. They say inside every challenge is an opportunity. At Illinois Wesleyan, you have the power to seize that opportunity. Discover the tools, the mentors, and the experiences to take on any challenge and shape not just who you are, but who you will become. The best college in Illinois for jobs is right here. Tap or click now to start your free application and break through at Illinois Wesleyan University. And welcome back for our final interview of the week here on Titan Table Talk. Excited to welcome back Illinois Wesleyan head football coach Norm Esch coming off a big victory on Saturday evening up at Elmhurst in the CCW opener. First time back on the field in 14 days, and I'm going to guess it felt real good to get off the start you guys did on Saturday. Well, it was good to get back on the field, especially after that uh, opening day game lost. Um, You really don't feel good until you play the next game, and and you use that as motivation, and we did. And, it, and we're, we're st- we were starting a new season. We were starting the CCIW conference race. And, uh, you know, I told our players that, you know, half the teams in the CCIW, CCIW are going to win and half are going to lose, and we wanted to be in the win column. And if you looked at all the scores, they were all lopsided. All yep. the winners were lopsided. So it's great to be in that position. And now we have to concentrate on getting our next CCIW win, which, was, which is against Carthage this week at home. Yeah, and there was a little bit of a – it was unusual even for a conference that does have a pretty big gap between top and bottom right now that I, was the closest game, 25 or 30 points or something like that around mm, the conference this more, weekend. Yeah. It was it was something, and, and Titans a big part of that one with the 55-7 to seven victory up at Elmhurst in the evening. And really a uh, positive game script from the very, very beginning. I mean, 28-0, 16 minutes and 15 seconds into the game – the Blue Jays answered back on one drive, and then it was 41-7 at halftime. And really, I mean, as much as you never take anything lightly, the game's in hand after the first 20 minutes. Um, able to do a whole lot of different things with your offense than you are when you're having to pass and try to come back the whole time. Well, there's a couple of things. I mean, our players did not feel good about the first game. I mean, we're a much better football team than what we showed at, up against um, Central College. 
And they're a good football team, and it kind of snowballed on us a little bit there, and, and caught us off guards and we, off guard, and we never could recover. So we were anxious to you know prove ourselves, and I think we did that. Um, we thought we were a better football team going into the contest against Elmhurst, but you you got to play at your level and not their level, and, and our, our players did that. We we talked to our players about coming out and capturing and and controlling and maintaining momentum. And we did that and made some big plays and got on the scoreboard, gave our defense something to play for, play for. And then, um, you know, our defense played great. I mean, we, their only score is a, a pass play over the top, and we just misplayed it. So they did a great job, too. Um, overall, and special teams, I mean, everybody uh, came to play, and they felt good. And, you know, I have a saying, every time you win, you gain confidence, and every time you lose, you lose confidence. And we definitely gained some confidence, and our, our players feel real good about where we're at right now. Yeah, and we can talk a little bit about the defensive side of the ball because, it's I mean, it's one thing to keep your opponent off the scoreboard. It's another thing to keep forcing three and outs and get the ball right back in the hands of your offense and also keep the Elmhurst defense on the field for a long time. I mean, you look at those defensive drives in the first half, three and out, three and out, blocked field goal, three and out had the one touchdown, and then, you know, at that point it was a turnover on downs on the Titan 19 when you're already so far behind you're not even thinking about kicking a field goal in that moment. And, you know, then the fumble, interception, three and out again, it's just over and over again, short drives, getting the Elmhurst defensive unit right back out on the field and, and just enables you to do that much more in the run game facing a tired defense too. Well, we also talked to our players about getting into the flow of the game and – it's different because on the offensive side, the flow of the game is staying on the field. And the flow of the game on the defensive side is getting off the field. And, and I just sensed that on, on both sides of the ball. And we fed off each other, and, and that's a great feeling. And that's why you win football games, especially in the CCIW. So we're looking to, you know, and we didn't play a, a perfect game. I, our players know that there were some, still some mistakes, and, we're, and we need to clean those things up. But we want to play this next game and get better and just keep building our – you know, our, our house. We said we laid a foundation. Our uh, JB uh, program is 2-0, and and, and now we're 1-1 one and one with the varsity, so we're 3-1 um, three, three and one overall. And so we're building our foundation, and we want to keep building that house. So, And, and so much of that foundation is going to be on the ground, whether it's Dermot or whether it's any number of the highly capable, talented running backs you've got in the running back room. Um, Talk about big plays, Jahari Scott on the first play from scrimmage for the offense after a three and out, 61-yard touchdown run right there. Uh, had an 88-yard return, too, in the, uh, on special teams. Danny Kent, six carries for 37 and a touchdown. Uh, Gray, 11 carries for 59 and a touchdown. With that lead, you're really able to spread the ball around on the ground, too, a lot, get a lot of different guys in there. Um, anything in particular, I mean, 50 carries averaging 6.3 yards a carry, that's... I mean, yeah, it, it's leading the yeah. whole game, and you get to run more, but still, that those are eye-popping numbers. Anytime you can rush over 300 yards a game, you're, you've had a great uh, a great game rushing the football. And part of that is just Dermot. Uh, we put a lot on Dermot Smythe, our quarterback. Um, he's a playmaker. You know, um, we gave him a lot of run reads where, you know, he either is going to hand it off or keep it. And uh, we saw some things that they were going to give us, and so he was going to be a big part of our offense, and he was. And he had a – he had a great day. I think he should be a candidate for CCW Player of the Week when you're involved with five scores. Well, and well five touchdowns will do that for you, possibly. Yeah, yeah. and over 100 yard rushing as a quarterback, and then he was his throwing percentage was good. I think he was 13 for 24. So, uh, yeah. 13 for 22, even better. Look at that. That's yeah. pretty sharp. I was off, I guess. <laughs> off so yeah, I mean, he had yeah. a great game, and he's our leader, and and he has some great talent all around him, so he knows how to use it. Mm -hmm. Um, as you look ahead now to finally a home game at Tucci Stadium this weekend, uh, Carthage coming in. Any Anything in particular you're looking forward to opening up at home? It'll be good to get off the road. I mean, the first one was an overnight, a long trip, and the next one was an uh, evening game. And, you know, when you play a night game, you're not getting back until 1 o'clock in the morning. So uh, it's nice to be home. Um, we love playing in front of our fans at Tucci Stadium. And it's going to be a little bit special for a couple of reasons. Number one, we have our own family weekend. You know, we like to separate that from homecoming. So this will be our football family weekend, and we'll do some special things with, with our players and their, their parents and their families. And then uh, first time for the new scoreboard. Yeah. Uh, we're very excited about that. Uh, everyone needs to come out and see it. It's, 
we moved it to the east end of the field. It's a perfect spot for us in between some beautiful trees, and it's a, a big video board that's really going to display a lot of great information during the game, and um, we're excited to have that, and, you know, there's a lot of people that made that possible. So, uh, And then to get our um, second CSAW win, I mean, you got to keep winning. And, oh, yeah. And so there's a lot of things that are, we're motivated about about this game. Any truth to the rumors that the scoreboard was placed there in honor of one of the most legendary karaoke performances ever done by an Illinois Wesleyan head coach? No, it wasn't. Uh-huh. I just I always looked down to the east end, and we had those nice evergreen trees, and it just seemed like a perfect spot for it, and uh, it's worked out well. We have a new scoreboard on the west end, too, so uh, we got them on both ends, and I think our fans are really going to enjoy it. I think our players are really going to be excited about it. Yeah. Uh, excited to see it in action. Excited to see the Titans finally wearing green this weekend as well. 1 p.m. kickoff against the Firebirds of Carthage College. That is this Saturday, so come on out and check out Coach Esch and the Titans in action. Should be a great ball game as they look to go to 2-0 and in CCW play. Good luck, Coach. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. Yeah, we're, looking for, we're, we're looking forward to this Saturday.